Hello. Well, I got an email this morning from PayPal telling me I have £200 in my account. My first thought was, that's very nice. And then, do you know what my second thought was? It was, now I'd better spend it before I discover that PayPal has impounded it for some reason. That's not a good sign, is it? And then, coincidentally enough, while I was drinking my breakfast coffee, I came upon a clip from the David Pakman show in which he describes a little problem he's been having with a payment method called Amazon Pay. You should know that Amazon Pay was a system that Amazon set up a while ago, but has since closed down to new members. I got an email from Amazon Pay yesterday saying that because of our Patreon account, Amazon Pay is suspending our Amazon Pay account and keeping all of our money. The email they sent me says, uh, we have closed your Amazon Pay account, canceled pending transactions, and placed a temporary hold on any funds in your account because your website, patreon.com slash David Pakman Show, may be in violation of our acceptable use policy, which prohibits the use of our payment service for transactions involving charitable solicitations by any entity without a valid 501c3 tax-exempt status. What they sort of seem to be saying is that they see us on Patreon soliciting funds, which they interpret to be charitable solicitations, but we're not a 501c3, and therefore they believe the funds that we are receiving via Amazon Pay are also charitable funds solicited without being a nonprofit 501c3. So therefore, they are banning us from Amazon Pay and impounding all of our money. I immediately appealed this, saying, what on earth does Patreon have to do with Amazon? We don't claim to be a nonprofit. We are a for-profit. People sign up for membership. What the hell is going on? And I got an email back from Amazon Pay within a few hours which saying simply, after reviewing your account, we have decided not to reinstate your Amazon Pay account. The problem with such organizations is that they're huge. They're amorphous and you can have very little personal contact with anybody there. Emails and phone calls are conducted with, so far as I can tell, office assistants who know very little about how to conduct finances and who have no responsibility beyond fulfilling the procedural steps which they're given on a questionnaire of some sort. I'm not accusing anyone, least of all, Amazon of dishonesty. I don't think it's dishonesty at all. I've had a long and very happy relationship with Amazon and they've always acted with great consideration when I've run into trouble with things I've bought through them. No, the problem is that we're not talking about buying sweaters here. We're talking about the provision of banking services. And Banking is, despite jokes about bankers as rapacious capitalists grinding down the faces of the poor, banking is a highly specialised trade upon which the entire Western world, the social and political systems, depends, without which even, well, even here, this pencil could not be produced. Have you heard about Milton Friedman's pencil? I'll leave a link below if you haven't. There's bound to be one somewhere on the internet. And in practice, that whole system depends upon trust. If you can't trust the banks, you can't conduct business and the whole financial system breaks down. Look what happened when people suddenly lost tr trust in the banks in America in 1929. That was at a time when America, though up and coming, 
still wasn't all that important to the world economy and yet the banking collapse there affected the entire world through a series of mistakes made by a few men sorry folks but it was certainly only men some mistakes made by a few men in the banking world and probably in the federal reserve caused trust to be entirely lost in banking and in the stock market and ultimately millions of lives were affected to the bad it was called the great depression and it wasn't only a bunch of okies who ended up with their families broken up and their lives crippled the knock-on effects not only destroyed lives across europe uh, across america but also across europe and it the results were world war ii and the crippled lives and horrible deaths of millions of people just because a few bankers made a few mistakes and i want to point out that the world was nowhere near as interconnected then as it is now and we really are very interconnected mastercard is run by the banks and is subject to some control and supervision but you see it has other non-banking daughters there's one called the mastercard foundation for instance which is a charitable institution it turns out that it has close links with another charitable organization called humanity ventures started by george soros which according to its self-description offers aid to migrants and refugees of course that doesn't mean that mastercard and soros are hand in glove it just means they are cooperating on a particular issue furthermore i have to stress that this is the mastercard foundation not mastercard itself that's linked to humanity ventures however i think we can safely infer that if mastercard itself were unhappy about the connection just like we're told they were unhappy about Robert Spencer's very high profile stand against Islamism, MasterCard would tell their foundation to steer clear of humanity ventures if they weren't happy with them. So there definitely has to be some sort of agreement there. And this raises the worry that all of these institutions are being affected by a wish not just to provide banking services, but to force us into some sort of public conformity with any philosophy which such institutions might wish to adopt. And this could be completely arbitrary right now. It's social justice and migrant relief. Who's to know what it will be in the future? Eugenics, for instance? I mean, that was a movement that had a good deal of traction amongst reasonable people in the 1930s and, by the way, continued in Sweden until the 1970s, much to their shame. The point is, we can never know what the guys in the boardrooms might decide is good for us at some future date. And if they have the power to starve us into compliance, then, well, comply we must. So, back to my PayPal account, the fact that I thought straight away that I should clean out that deposit as soon as I could shows just how nervous I am now of such electronic payment methods. Electronic payment method methods run by huge international companies that have no apparent accountability in the countries in which they operate. Organisations like Patreon, for instance, operate like banking institutions, but aren't subject to the same controls as banks, backed and constrained by governments. And that's the problem. International transactions are now easier because of operations like PayPal, but they're also a lot riskier. And people don't like to take risks with their money, especially if they don't have that much of it to risk, or <laughs> unless they have a gambling addiction, of course. So because of that, I, and no doubt many others, will just spend what we have while we've got it 
instead of leaving it in trust for those companies to use to invest and grow. Ultimately, that's not going to do anyone any good at all. Thanks for listening. Please like and subscribe. And if you wish to donate, it's through PayPal at grannyopteryx at gmail.com. Till next time.